The expression for the density of free or empty space is h bar over a times c, as we saw in part 1. h bar is the reduced Planck's constant, a is the cross sectional area of one cycle of a light wave, and c is the speed of light. Let's check if this equation is homogeneous. The unit of the left hand side is kilograms per meter cubed, which is the unit of density. For the right hand side, we get the unit of the Planck's constant joule second, which in base units is kilograms meter squared per second, divided by the unit of area, which is meter squared, divided by the unit of speed, meters per second. This simplifies to kilograms per meter. We are missing a meter squared in the denominator for this to be the unit of density. If you remember, in part 1, there was an area term A prime, which represented the area enclosed by one cycle of the wave, and we wrote the density of space as h bar over this. We chose A prime to be equal to 1 because it didn't change the value of the energy. That is why our final form of the density equation did not contain it. However, its unit, which is meter squared, still remains, even though the magnitude is 1. So our final unit of the right hand side becomes kilograms per meter divided by meter squared and this gives kilograms per meter cube. Hence, the equation is homogeneous. We can also write the density as h bar over pi radio squared times c, where we have simply replaced a with the expression for the area since the cross-sectional area is circular. Taking the upper limits of the amplitude of light which is the ball radius as we saw in part 1, we can say that r is equal to the ball radius. Multiplying and dividing the right hand side by c, we get this. We can cross multiply to have pi rho c squared equal to h bar c on r squared. Inverting both sides of the equation, here it's this. Let's multiply both sides of the equation by the force that an electron in the first orbit of the hydrogen atom experiences as follows. Just for the purpose of recognition, let's write out the full expression for this force on the right hand side of this equation to have the following expression. The R squares cancel to give this. Can you now recognize that the right hand side is the expression of the fine structure constant alpha? If not, then go and check it out and confirm. So we have alpha equal to f subscript e over pi rho c squared. Don't forget our a prime term that we have been ignoring since. We need it for this ratio to be unitless, so that the equation becomes homogeneous. So we slot it in to have this. Therefore, we can also define the density of free space as a function of the fine structure constant as follows. Area times volume density is equal to linear density. So, we can also write alpha equal to Fe of a pi mu c squared. The term in the denominator has units of force, and since the wave that we have been analyzing since is a light wave, then this force must be the force exerted by a photon of light. So, we can write alpha equal to F subscript E the force that a moving electron in the ball radius of the hydrogen atom will exert over F subscript P, 
the force that a single photon will exert. This allows us to define the fine structure constant as the constant that tells us how strongly a photon will interact with an electron. This is how it is defined in quantum electrodynamics. So we don't need all the fancy math and theories of quantum mechanics to know this. My model works just fine in predicting or defining it, and it is easier and does not violate common sense, unlike quantum mechanics. Don't forget to subscribe as there are more explanations and simplifications like this to come, and you might not want to miss out. Just a single click on the red button below this video sets you up. There is some kind of matter called dark matter, which is a hypothetical form of matter thought to account for approximately 85% of the matter in the universe. Dark matter is called dark because it does not appear to interact with the electromagnetic field, which means it does not absorb reflect or emit electromagnetic radiation and is, therefore, difficult to detect. This matter is thought to be contained in empty space itself. I have shown that electromagnetic radiations are oscillations of space itself, so how can you expect it to interact with EM radiations when it is the EM radiations? Free space could be dark matter, and I have just shown you that it has a density, and I have also calculated the value of that density. If my model of waves had been the model used since the beginning of classical physics, we wouldn't have had to wait until we are unable to explain astronomical observations such as gravitational effects to infer the existence of dark matter or the idea that empty space has mass. This comes naturally in my model. One of the consequences of general relativity is massive objects such as a cluster of galaxies lying between a more distant source such as a quasar and an observer should act as a lens to bend light from this source. The more massive an object the more lensing is observed. By measuring the distortion geometry, the mass of the intervening cluster can be obtained. In the dozen of cases where this has been done, the mass to light ratio obtained corresponds to the dynamic dark matter measurements of clusters. Let's take the case where our Milky Way galaxy is the gravitational lens. Light from a distant galaxy, passing just after a surface of a sphere drawn to enclose the whole galaxy, is bent by our galaxy according to general relativity, and we can measure the angle of deflection and use it to estimate the mass of the galaxy. The mass of the galaxy was estimated to be about 1.2 to 1.9 trillion solar masses. This was about the same result obtained when the method of observing the velocities of the stars orbiting the galaxy was used. In kilograms, this rates between 2.2 to 3.8 exponential 42 kilograms. In contrast, the mass of the galaxy was also estimated using the counting stars method. It gave a mass of the galaxy of about 100 billion solar masses. This averages to about 2 exponential 41 kilograms. The enormous difference between these two results suggests that there is some extra mass which we do not see. Because the mass gotten using the velocity method is the mass gotten by including all these then it is the real mass of the galaxy. This data is widely spread, but at least 
it gives us an idea of what is accepted as the mass of the galaxy. And because astronomers could not account for this extra mass, they had to hypothesize dark matter. I can explain this observation using my model without breaking a sweat. Let's take the sphere that encloses the galaxy. The volume enclosed by this sphere is given by the following formula, where r is the radius of the sphere. The diameter of the Milky Way has not been measured accurately, but estimates place it around 26.8 kiloparsecs, which is around 87,400 light years. So the radius of the galaxy is roughly 5 exponential 20 meters. Subbing this into the expression for volume as follows, we get 5 exponential 62 cubic meters. We calculated the density of free space using my formula rho equal h bar on a times c and had values between 0.45 exponential minus 22 and 4.5 exponential minus 21 meters cubed. Let's take the density to be 4.5 exponential minus 21 kilograms per meter cubed. To calculate the mass of the galaxy, we take the volume density times the volume as follows. This gives 2.25 exponential 42 kilograms. This is the mass of the empty space that is enclosed by this volume alone. We haven't added the mass of the baryonic matter yet. This confirms that there is more mass than we observe which thus confirms the gravitational lensing observations and galactic mass measurement results. Now, let's analyze the results. We have seen that, by the velocity method, the galaxy's mass is between 2.4 and 3.8 exponential 42 kilograms. And this is the real mass of the galaxy. By measuring only the visible matter we see, the mass is about 2 exponential 41 kilograms. So mass is missing, the mass of the so-called dark matter. Let me suggest that this is the mass of the empty space, which I have calculated, which is 2.25 exponential 42 kilograms. Mathematically, the real mass is equal to the observed mass plus the unseen mass. So if we do the addition as follows, we get 2.5 exponential 42 kilograms. This number lies between 2.4 and 3.8 exponential 42 kilograms, which was taken as the real mass. In terms of percentage of the actual mass of the galaxy, the percentage mass of the seen matter can be calculated as follows, which gives 8%. The percentage mass of the unseen matter is thus 100 minus 8, which is equal to 92%. This result is an excellent agreement with today's astronomical data. Can we now conclusively say that my suggestion is correct? that dark matter is empty space itself? Tell me your thoughts in the comment section below. Let me quickly say something to help your understanding of my other video titled Einstein's Field Equation for Charge, where I show that charge obeys the same field equation like mass, with the gravitational constant simply replaced by the electrostatic constant. If you try to derive the first component T0 of the stress energy momentum tensor, you will arrive at a point where you will need to use the equation E equal mc squared, which is when you multiply the four velocity with itself. What I did is express the mass 
as a function of the mass to charge ratio as follows where capital Q is the total charge of the particle considered. So, this is equal to beta Q C squared. If beta is equal to 1, then we get energy equal to charge times speed of light squared. Any of the forms of the equation we do just fine. This approach is correct because you cannot have charge without a charge carrier which has mass. So, we can always use mass to charge ratios. I couldn't put all the details of the derivation of the field equation on that video, but if you have any trouble confirming it, leave a comment and I will respond.